Hey everybody, this is Krista with The Big Family Homestead and today I'm going to show you what you need to do to get started making bread today. Yes, I said making bread today. This is something that is super important. So many of you or so many folks don't know how to make fresh bread. Well, this is the easiest bread you could pretty much not mess up if you just follow my instructions. So here we go. Here's the ingredients. Okay, for our ingredients, super, super basic, guys. We need two and a half cups of warm water. We need a tablespoon and a half of sugar. I'm using organic cane sugar. And then we need a tablespoon of dry active yeast. We need a tablespoon and a half of sea salt. Let me get that in the shot there. There we go. Tablespoon and a half of sea salt. And then six to seven cups of bread flour. And yes, not an exact amount, and I'll tell you why in a second. All right, this recipe could not be any easier. So we're going to go ahead and start with two and a half cups of warm water. Um, this water is warm. It's not hot. It's not cold. Um, you don't want to have uh, the water super hot because it can kill your yeast. So warm to the touch, um, even to almost too warm, that's a, getting close to being too hot. So um, we're going to go ahead. We have warm water. We're going to go ahead and put two and a half cups in our bowl. You don't have to use a metal bowl like this. You can use a plastic bowl, a glass bowl. Heck, you can even use a bucket. So it is entirely up to you. Now we are going to go ahead and use a tablespoon and a half of sugar. Um, sugar is not always necessary in bread recipes. I just, this is the recipe that there is, that it is so that the yeast will activate faster and it just gives it a really good flavor. So not that the, not that the sugar, it's not a sugary bread is what I'm saying. So we're going to just stir this and dissolve the sugar. And then we're going to go ahead and put our yeast in. We need one tablespoon of yeast. And yes, you can cut this recipe in half or double it, I've done both. I'm just going to sprinkle the yeast right there on top and let that activate. So you can kind of see a little bit around the edge almost instantly it starts to get happy and get bubbly. So I wanna to talk to you real quick about the yeast. So I'm using the Star uh, Dry Active Yeast or active dry yeast, whichever order you want to put it in. Um, I store this, I open up a one of the two pound vacuum sealed containers or bags of yeast and I put it in um, an airtight jar and I keep this in my freezer at all times. So except when I'm using it. When I'm using it, obviously it's on the counter. When I'm not, it's in the freezer. So this is going to, this is already getting really nice and bubbly. So I'm going to go ahead and add the flour. I'm gonna add the flour before the salt. Um, that way it doesn't um, stop the yeast from activating. And I've got this container and the lid got crammed on there pretty tight. All right, so my, my little measuring cup got buried in there. I'm not sure how that happened. Maybe one of my little minions decided to bury it. So I'm gonna fluff up the, the uh, flour. Here, let me move this really quick. I'm gonna fluff up the flour. I'm not gonna sift the flour or anything like that, but I'm just gonna kind of fluff it a little bit so it's not so heavy. Um, and then I will just put in here, I'll start out with three cups of flour and then add the salt. So there's three-ish cups of flour. Let me move that out of the way. And um, then I'm gonna go ahead and put the tablespoon of salt on top. No, it's a tablespoon and a half. What is that, I wonder? Weird stuff, you never know what you're gonna find with a house full of kids and animals. So, all right. Now I've got my favorite Dutch whisk that I'm gonna use to stir this. I'm gonna give it a good stir, get this all incorporated. Now, in the, in the ingredients list, I had said we're going to use six to seven cups of flour. The reason for that is if you live in a dry, arid place, you'll need less flour. If you live in a very humid place, you may need more flour. 
Um, it, or if it's raining outside or in the middle of winter and it, you have your heat running and it's very dry, that's when you're going to um, not add all of the flour at once. So today it's quite rainy and um, we're gonna help go ahead and just add our flour a little bit at a time. If you add too much flour, it's a brick. If you add not enough flour, it won't rise properly. So there's our three cups. Number four and number five. Now, I normally use a stand mixer to mix this, but I wanted you guys to see uh, what it looks like um, in a bowl. So you can do it in a bowl, you can do it in a stand mixer, it's really up to you. So as you can see, it's starting to come together just like so. It's not quite there yet. As you can see, it kind of falls flat. It doesn't have enough flour yet. So we only have five cups here. So I'm going to add the sixth cup and that's probably going to be it. Because like I said, it depends on the day. But as we need this, we may need to add more. So we're gonna keep mixing this. And actually, I'm gonna to go to my hands. I like to mix with my hands because as my uh, dear, dear, dear mother-in-law has said for you, had said for years, uh, God gave you these first. So I am going to um, switch over to using my hands and my hands are clean. So. And somebody's pulling in the driveway <laughs> and the dogs are going to flip out. All right. So we're just going to keep kneading this and um, we may need to add some more flour here in just a minute. But you see how I'm doing this? I'm just folding this over and turning the bowl. I'm not turning the dough. I'm just turning the bowl. You can knead this on the counter. I like to knead it in the bowl so it uses up all the flour that's on that's in the bowl. Um, I really honestly don't like cleaning up flour off of the counter. So we're getting to the spot where it's going to be just about done. It's still a little sticky. We're gonna keep kneading it. This is that, that um, if you guys have watched the big, um, the big bakers, like there's, uh, what's his name? Hollywood guy, I don't know. But uh, he like slaps it on the counter. Um, and so I I like to use the bowl and it kind of, the pushing and the pulling and the, that's kind of that, that pulling is that what creates that, um, the good stretch in a dough. All right, so we need some more flour. So I'm gonna add just a bit. So I've got a half a cup here. Mix that around there. Get that all around the bowl. It's funny, this is actually a really good workout. It works these muscles right back here. There has been times where my, that muscle starts to cramp on me. Oh, I think that half a cup was just about right. So we're just gonna keep working this until all that flour is gone. It's this dough is no longer sticky, okay? It's still even not, so as I tear it apart, it's not it's not sticky. We're just going to incorporate the rest of this dough, and then I'll show you how what it looks like when I'm done. All right, so we are done here. So you can see, okay? You can see here it's not sticky, and as you press down into it, it will come back up. That's what you want. It's holding its shape. It springs back. It's nice. Okay. I could actually keep kneading this, but there's ha huh, no need to get it. Ha. Huh? Yeah, that was lame. Sorry. Bad joke. I'm not good at the jokes. Brad's better at the jokes than me. So what we're going to do is we're going to oil this bowl. We're going to cover it with either a wet towel or some plastic wrap. We're going to let this sit for half an hour. 
Yes, I said, one half hour, 30 whole minutes. Not the four hours that it takes to rise. Nope, only 30 minutes. This is the fastest bread from start to finish, two hours. So we'll be back in about a half an hour. Okay, so we've waited our time and look at that nice big, it's risen, it's doubled in size in just 30 minutes. I did keep it in a warm oven. Um, it's kind of a colder day today, so I like to put it in a warm oven when it's cooler out. Uh, of course, in the summertime, leave it straight on the counter. But 30 minutes, it's doubled in size. Now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to take the bread, the dough and the camera over to the counter because I can't roll it out on here. I need a bigger space to show you how to roll this into beautiful logs of dough. So here we go. Some flour down on this counter here. Not a ton, just basically to keep the dough from sticking. In a big rectangle, you want a big rectangle, okay? Just like so. <clears throat> now, now I'm not gonna knock this down. I'm not going to knead it. I'm just going to roll this out on top of the flour, just like so. So I'll roll off to the side. I need my rolling pin. And then we need just a little bit of flour on top. Not a lot. We don't need to add tons of flour to it. It's just basically to keep the flour, the rolling pin from sticking. Now all I'm going to do is just roll this out into a big rectangle. Just like so. And it won't be a perfect rectangle. That's really okay. But we're just gonna roll this out. Stretch it out as much as we possibly can, just like so. And then we're gonna cut this in half. You can use a knife, you can use a dough knife. Honestly, I find this to be quite easy. Pizza cutter, done. Now, we're gonna take one of these, I'll just take this one right here, I'm gonna roll it this way. So the rounded part, it's not gonna, like I said, it's not gonna be perfectly square. I'm just gonna take this and just roll it like a log. Like if you've made a jelly roll, that's what you're doing but you're just gonna roll it up or cinnamon rolls or whatever. You just roll it up and then you've got this rough edge here, but that's okay, we're gonna put that flat. But on these ends here, I hope you can see this. There we go. On this end here, we're just gonna curl this under and just kind of tuck it and pinch it so that it stays together. Just like that, we're gonna do that to the other side Just like so. And then we've got our greased cookie sheet here. And I'm gonna make sure that this, this cut side is down. So you see it's on the bottom. We're just gonna kind of shape this to where it is straight-ish. Because sometimes it's not, and it looks like a funky worm. So that one's there. Now we're gonna I'm gonna show you the next one. Same thing, you take the rounded edge, the short edge, and you just curl it in. And just keep doing that till you get all the way to the end. You don't need to pinch on the way in, just at the ends. Pinch and tuck the ends so that it makes a nice rounded edge. Just like that. And then again, cut side down can see on there like that. Oh, we got a long one here. All right, let's get a, that's the nice thing about right now is the best time you can manipulate this dough and make it look just perfect, just like so. All right, now we're gonna cover this with some plastic and then we're gonna put this back in our warm place in the oven and let this rise for, uh, guess what, another 30 minutes. 
All right, side note, you see how this is just like stuck to the counter now? And this would take a lot to scrape this off or to wipe this off with a rag. So I take my dough blade, right? And just scrape all of this off. And it's and I'm keeping it flat. I'm not doing it like this. So I'm not scratching the granite. Or I've used this on um on the uh for mica countertops as well, and it works really well. Get that scraped like that. See that? All clean. And then just sweep it up onto the dough blade, and it's a lot less mess. And your towel, your wash rag's not getting all gummed up with flour. That's the worst. Okay, this is the last step before we bake. So we've got our oven heating up to 375 degrees. We'll bake it for 30 minutes, but we've got to do some decorating to our loaves of bread here. So we've got our everything bagel seasoning. You don't have to use this, but trust me, you'll love it. Trust me. Our family loves it. Yeah. Actually, uh, our daughter Hope, she's used probably half of this and she puts it on her eggs when she bake when she cooks her eggs. She, she's, yeah, she loves this stuff. It's so. very good, guys. She's over here. She's, yes, it's very good. Okay, so we need an egg wash. Um, we have one egg here, and I need a little bit of water. I forgot to get. So um, I will just go ahead and do without this time. So I, I usually put like a tablespoon of water in here. You don't have to. That's just what I've always done. Uh, this will work just fine. So you just whisk this, beat the egg. Uh, just like so. So, egg beaten. You guys know how to beat an egg, I would hope. So, uh, we're going to take our plastic off gingerly. If you take it off too quickly, it can um, it can deflate the loaves of bread too easily. Um, so, we're going to go ahead and do a couple things uh, before we put this in the oven. We're going to put our egg wash on. It's just... And like I said, be very gingerly with this because you don't want to deflate your loaf. <clears throat> Deflated loaves don't look very pretty. So we're just gonna brush this egg on here, just like this. We're gonna keep doing that until it's all coated. We're gonna just coat the top and the sides, just like this. This will make it really beautiful. Um, even if you don't put any of the bagel seasoning on there, it will just give it this golden, just gorgeous color. All right, now we're gonna take our lame, it's our, basically a blade. We're gonna slice it just like this. Just being very gingerly with it. And then we'll sprinkle our everything bagel seasoning on top. And I will do this to both loaves, but I'm just going to show you one. Just like this. You can use sesames. You can use just poppies. Um, but our family just really loves the everything bagel seasoning. Just like that. As much or as little as you like. Looks like I missed a spot there, but that's okay. That'll be Hope's piece right there. So. All right, so I'll do the other one and then I'll show you what it looks like before I pop it in the oven. There they are, all dressed and ready to go. And um, we're gonna put these, like I said before, we're gonna put these into a 375 degree oven for 30 minutes. Um, being careful not to put it too low in your oven um, because it will, it can tend to burn too quickly uh, the bottom before the top is done. So try and put it as high in your oven as possible. So we're gonna go ahead and put this in here. And that will bake for 30 minutes. All right, folks, they're done. Let's turn that off, turn the timer off. Look at that. Look at that, aren't those beautiful? Set those down right there. All right, now, this took no time at all. Now what I'm gonna do before um, 
we keep talking, I wanna get these off of here because if you leave them on the hot pan, they'll get kind of soggy on the bottom. So, you wanna make sure that you take them off the pan and put them on a cooling rack. So I just happen to have a cooling rack right here. Slide them right off of there. Oh man, those look so good. This makes so much bread, guys. That six and a half cups of flour make a lot of bread. Look at that. Now I'm not gonna cut this open because you know why? If I do, I'm gonna burn myself and then I'm gonna wanna taste it and then I'll burn myself, so I'm not gonna do that. But I'm gonna go ahead and lift these up so that you can see how beautiful they are. See if I can tilt them just a hair more. There we go. <laughs> All right, so this bread from start to finish was less than two hours. If you're using a stand mixer, it would take probably a little bit less than that. But by hand, it takes about an hour and 45 minutes. So this bread is not just for French bread loaves like these, right? This is, you can make this into sandwich bread. You can put it into a loaf pan. I would, what this recipe does, this makes three loaf pans. Um, if you put, if you divide this in half and put one half in one loaf pan, it will overflow. Trust me, I've done it. It has overflowed and it makes this massive, huge mess in the oven. So divide this into three to make um, loaves of bread. Or you can take, make a smaller French bread, a loaf pan uh, or loaf of bread, and then you can do monkey bread with that. So you would have this, this, you would have three different kinds of bread, sandwich bread, French bread, and monkey bread. So this recipe is super versatile, super delicious, um, and very easy. So I really hope that you get started in your uh, preparedness um, journey, making this bread and really having fun with it. This, like I said, this very, this bread is very versatile and loads of fun. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please don't hesitate to like and subscribe. I'm Krista with The Big Family Homestead, and you guys have a blessed and amazing day.